Good morning. Just getting set up here. Sipping a little coffee. Got my son Grant with me this morning. I don't think we have anybody on yet, but <clears throat> we'll give it a second. <clears throat> morning, Doug. Somebody give me a sound check. Morning, Bob. How's the sound? I went back to using a lapel mic, so. <clears throat> Good morning, Doug. Good morning, Bob. Doug says, sounds good. I went back to the lapel mic, guys. Hopefully you like it. What do you think about the new backdrop here? Me and Grant put this together yesterday. I think it's a little bit more professional than maybe what we had before. Oh, I forgot to plug in the lapel mic. So this is not lapel mic quality, sorry. I'm not gonna try to do it while we're already going, so let's just keep going. Is there a lot of echo in here? Well, we got 21 folks on, so let's go ahead and kick it off here. Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Rich. I am Rich Brown, the co-founder, co-host of the American Warrior Show, the American Warrior Society. Retired Marine Corps officer, former cop, former corrections officer, former regional manager for American Red Cross Disaster Preparedness, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You want to read the bio? Knock yourself out. Check it out at AmericanWarriorSociety.com. I'm joined this morning by my son Grant. I'm gonna introduce him in just a second. <clears throat> Today we're gonna to talk about. Last week we talked about my big crazy battle belt, and I got it with me this morning. I wrote an article on it. But before we get into all that, let's talk about swag, man. You can see Grant's rocking the classic American Warrior Society swag. Check out that, check out our store at AmericanWarriorSociety.com or AmericanWarriorShow.com and you can get some of that. Once again, drinking Pete's. I'm drinking Pete's out of a coffee cup I got in Rome, Italy last year. And once again, our, our hearts go out to uh, our friends that are still in Italy and <clears throat> will be for the foreseeable future. So God bless those folks over there and, and, uh, and the United States of America, man, because we, we're now the epicenter of this COVID thing. We'll see where it goes. Um, before I introduce Grant, let's see who's on real quick. Got 26 folks. Please like and share because uh, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to go ahead and hint at it a little bit. We're going to be talking about the covert, bump in the night, battle belt, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> We've got the way that I set mine up, but we also got, uh, got another option and Grant is going to walk us through that today. That's why I've asked him to be on the show. Let's see who's on. Ah, uh, let's see, let's see. Rudy is on, John is on, Bob, Jeff is on, John is on, my beautiful bride, Miss Lisa is on. Terry is on, says, good morning, friends. Beautiful day here in Arab, Alabama, 44 degrees. Dale and Rob is on, Eric is on, William is on, Jeff is on. He says, dang, that's good looking son you got there. Who's his mom? Yeah, he's got a good looking mama too. Paul is on, Mike, Corbett, wow. Okay, 34 people, please like and share. <clears throat> I'm gonna introduce my son this morning. Grant, uh, you wanna give him your quick bio? Sure, I'm your son and I'm a computer science major at Tennessee Tech University. I'm currently a master's student. I received my bachelor's degree over the Christmas break. And I'm looking forward to new developments. And once I get out of college, I want to go into government research for cybersecurity. And uh, last summer, Grant was a research intern at Sandia National Lab, working on cybersecurity defense for the United States government. And that's where, unless this COVID thing screws us up again, that's where he'll be going back to this summer, working at the research facility there, doing God's work. So um, <clears throat> last week, 
<coughs> Excuse me, folks. Last week we talked about this big monstrosity, the rich brown bump in the night duty belt. And that's the article you need to check out. I actually wrote an article, the link is in the top here, as to why I put it together, how I put it together, where everything is placed. There's a reason why the things that are on there are on there. There's a reason why they're placed where they're placed. And if you want to, you want me to give you in uh, 2,000 words or less why I put what I put on there, where I put it on there. <clears throat> and it's DIY, man. Like I told you guys last week, I probably had to go buy one thing that I didn't have. And other than that, I had everything that was laying in a bag or a sea bag or some old uh, tactical bag or some piece of junk that I had laying around here. <laughs> so we we're able to put that together. Uh, based on what you're gonna see today, I'm gonna put another article together on this idea of a covert, low-vis battle belt. And uh, hopefully you guys will like it. But before Grant gives in, gets into it, I know I keep teasing it, because this is pretty, pretty cool. Let's see who's on. Uh, let's see, Paul is on, Rob is on, Jason is on from Knoxville. Good morning, Jason. God bless you, brother. Uh, love, good morning from Maryland. Good morning from the beautiful hills of East Tennessee. All right, Grant, enough teasing. Show them what you got. <clears throat> okay, what we have here, and I'm not sure if you guys can see it, so he's, he's just slid something around. He's going to pick it up so you guys can get a better look at it. Is a black covert fanny pack. And Dad, what, what's the company behind this one? Um, this is an old Galco fanny pack that I had when I was a, a cop. <clears throat> and again, this was just laying around. Since Grant is home right now from college, and yeah, when we're, uh, he's helping augment our farm's defenses, uh, we, I made my battle belt, and, and Grant's like, well, yeah, I'd kind of like to have one too so I could help out. And we started looking, and I'm like, I don't know that you need a battle belt. What about something like this? And I got the idea, I gotta tell you, from my good friend Cecil Birch over at Immediate Action Combatives. Cecil Birch, of course, check him out, but he was like, hey, Rich, you know, I know you're working on a battle belt. I listened to show 208, which is the show you need to check out. And he said, after I listened to the show, man, um, this is what I run. And he sent me some pictures of it. And I'm like, this is a good idea. We should try this. Absolutely. So, Grant, take it away. Okay. It's a Galco bag, if you wanted to know. And they, they come in other colors other than black. Go ahead. So, the first thing that we did was kind of, I, Dad, give me some pointers on what should be in the pack. And so we got a little bit of everything in here. Well, let me, let me do it like we talked about. <clears throat> this big thing has black nitrile gloves. Does yours? Yes, it does. Right here in the left pocket. Okay. This big thing here, uh, Grant, it's got pepper, pepper spray. Yep, that's my right pocket. Okay, this has got a handgun in it. Yes, sir. So does mine. <clears throat> Buck 19, the spare magazine. Okay. I'm believing you now. But I've got a flashlight on mine. So does mine, right here. Okay, I got, um, what else I got? I got, I got handcuffs on mine because I want to restrain people. Handcuffs are right here. <clears throat> um, I've got a tourniquet. tourniquet. Rat's tourniquet, right here. Okay, I've got, uh, what other medical you got in there? I see other medical in there. We've got a package of quick clock. We have Israeli bandages. And we have chest seal for sucking chest wounds. What else you got in there? Let's see. That is it. So the only thing it looks like you don't have is a rifle magazine. That's right. Or leather gloves. <clears throat> okay, Grant, you can put that down. <clears throat> so you got gloves, cuffs, OC spray, flashlight, rat's tourniquet, seal, Israeli bandage, Glock 19, 16 rounds in the gun. Well, it's unloaded this morning because we wanted to demo it. 
and an 18 round backup magazine, all in a discreet little package that if he spins it around behind his back and puts a coat on, you can't even see it. So again, it's this idea that you don't have to leave the house with something crazy like this if this ain't your jam. I get it. Um, the, this covert system can work just as good and uh, be just as great when you just hang it on the door and grab it and go. So it was something that we thought we would share with you guys this morning, not take up a whole lot of your time. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Is it, wh Which one do you think you would go with? More of the robust duty belt like I put together or something maybe more less overt, more covert, more low vis with something like what Grant has. Looks like my, my feed is frozen here on my laptop, but what do you guys think? <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. Jason says, I have all that in my bug out bag. Sam has joined us, good morning, Sam. Roger's on, good morning, Semper Fi. Robert is on, good morning, sir. Rich is on. John says, I like it because it's innocuous. Absolutely, man, yeah, that's what we were thinking. It's a great little covert rig. It doesn't raise a lot of suspicion. It looks like it could be something that your weird aunt wears, a bag like that. <clears throat> you got it spun around behind you and a coat on with a black shirt, you will not see it. Yeah, a lot of people are saying covert, and I agree with you, man. Uh, more covert, Sam says, of course. Sam, I won't go into what you do, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know that you can respect the covert. Yeah, everybody says covert, and I agree with you. Uh, I think it's I think it's probably a better system. Doesn't really raise a whole lot of eyebrows, and yet you've got every single piece of kit that you need, and it weighs less, too. So there's a whole lot of reasons why you could put something like this together. And the one that uh, my friend Cecil Birch runs, it's uh, it's maroon or red or something. It looks. You know, it looks like something your, your mom would wear for a jog or something like that. Very, you know, it's, it's completely, uh, completely innocuous. <clears throat> so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write a, um, a DIY covert duty belt article. We already written, I already wrote the last one, which you need to check out. It's in the links to this <clears throat> Coffee with the Rich above. And uh, you can click on that and read that if you want to set up one of those. If you don't, I'm going to write another one based on what Grant and I have been working on with his. Is this a perfect system? No, of course not. Nothing is. Um, but it's the one that we have right now. So thanks to the 43 folks that are joining us this morning. I really appreciate it getting up with me on a Friday morning. Remember, we're going to have Emerging Threats Monday. So Monday morning, I'm going to be coming on. This past Monday, if you missed it, we talked about threats to our electrical grid and what happens when the lights go out. <clears throat> if you wanna go back and check that out, all the previous Coffee with the Riches are saved for you in the video uh, section of the American Warrior Society's Facebook page. Today, you know, the American Warrior Society is the sponsor of Coffee with the Rich, and if you wanna find out more about it and get access to all of our premium content, please check us out there, AmericanWarriorSociety.com. Get access to the training vault right now while you're sitting on the couch at home. You can do all the dry fire, do all the training programs to get ready. <clears throat> Let's see who else we've got on here. 39 folks joining us this morning. Eric says, both grants for to go out belt if I had your size property. Yeah. And that's part of it too, man. You know, with 14 acres mm -hmm. like we have here, you know, we're in our side house. But on, the, on our property, we've got my dad's house, my house, and this side slash guest house where Grant lives when he's home from college. And all the acres and outbuildings and barns and all this stuff. So I need something a little bit more robust to go out and look at the property. Uh, Grant and I, we got walkie-talkies. So if he's at the side house and I'm there, we can actually maneuver around on the property. And we've been actually working on contact and cover a little bit. You know, Grant doesn't have the background I've had, but there's no reason in the world why we can't build him that background. And that's what American Warrior Society in the Training Vault's all about. We got all the programming necessary to teach you a lot of these skills. Uh, what is it Andrew Bronco always says? 
100% of the men out there think they're good, good shooters. 99% of them are wrong. Uh, and for some reason, all, all men think they can do that, especially all good American men. But if you want to get better, check out the training program. Most of them are led and guided by Mr. Mike Seeklander himself, the uh, IDPA world, current IDPA world champion. So again, have access to him. He does Zoom coaching sessions if you're a member, so you can get access to that as well. Let's see what comments are on here, Grant. <clears throat> totally. Let's get into it. Dr. John Eden is on. Good morning, sir. Matthew says, SOE makes a great one with Velcro on the inside and can be super customized. If people ask me what's in it, I tell them I have diabetes. <laughs> oh, that's great. Bob says, I like both. <clears throat> Jeff says, I'd say covert. Dr. Eden says covert. Rob says, after the last show, I built the battle belt. I love it. I will build the covert belt. Great idea. Jeff says, and bring the fanny pack back. I don't know why the fanny pack ever went away. I love it, man. All the MARSOC operators are rocking fanny packs in Afghanistan. There's got to be something to it. Lisa says, your background looks great. Love the AWS logo. Yeah, do you guys like the new background? What do you think about that? We, uh, Grant and I had been storing old barn wood down at the barn because we are going to do some repairs. And we thought, hey... We can make a pretty cool little background since we're out here on the farm. Uh, Dr. Eden says, nitrile gloves, purple and blue shows the blood better than black, especially in low. That's, that's great, sir. Uh, that's exactly what we'll do for now because we have black gloves in there and you're absolutely right. Hadn't even thought of that. Uh, Emily has joined us. John is on here. Morning, Rich. AWS number 912. Mr. Todd Orr is on here. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Todd. Uh, Last time I uh, saw you, I think me and Grant were there. We were drinking some scotch and bourbon with you in uh, Bozeman, Montana. Doug says, will you detail the details of the Galco bag? I was just looking for a source, but I don't see it. Yeah, um, I'm going to write an article about it, but we can go through it real quick. Uh, Grant, if you take that off and show it to him again. Absolutely. Just point to it. So what do we have here in this side pouch? We have pepper spray. And what, what brand are you running? I run 5.3. What does that stand for? 5.3 stands for 5.3 million Scoville units, which is the hottest pepper spray on the market. Comes in this nice small package. By Fox Labs. And we've also got, so on the other side pocket, he's got nitrile gloves. So if you're just joining us late, we're talking about the Covert Battle Belt. <clears throat> then on, on this area, he's got a flashlight, which you can see sticking out the top. And what else is on the inside, Grant? You just talk through it. Okay. And inside, I have a pair of handcuffs for a strain. Rats, tourniquet. Israeli bandage. Quick clock and chest seal. So the chest seal, I got to give my my friend Justin Carroll uh, a lot of props for that. We were talking over the battle belt setup, and uh, Justin, you can follow him at SwiftSilentDeadly.com. Justin was a reconnaissance marine, force reconnaissance marine, and Marsoc marine. And he was talking to me about building his sweet battle belt because they were going to Afghanistan, the first ever group of raiders to go to Afghanistan. And uh, he's like, man, I, I get there. We kept working on this kit to make it the best. And when we got there, the Connex box didn't show up for two weeks. Yeah, we had two weeks worth of mission to run while we waited. So we just cobbled together a bunch of gear. But one of the things he told me was there's an over-reliance on tourniquets in the defensive shooting community. I said, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, people are enamored by him predominantly because of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. They've saved a lot of lives. But the problem is our war fighters are wearing plates, so it's protecting their vitals, but they're getting these extremity wounds, he said. And, and he's an EMT right now in North Carolina, <clears throat> among other things. But he said, um, with civilians, they're not running armor. So what we're seeing is sucking chest wounds. So that's one of the reasons why he's like, man, I would rather you run a, a chest seal than even a tourniquet. 
And I thought that was a pretty good, that made logical sense to me. So one of the things that I need for my belt is my system is some sort of chest seal. Now I have them in my truck, I have them in the house, but I probably need to have one on my kit like Grant does. So let's see who, <clears throat> let's see what we got on here this morning. So Doug, hopefully that answered your question. Tiffany has joined us, good morning. Todd says, good morning, gentlemen. Chris has joined us, and Jason Brown has joined us. Good morning, Jason. All right, anybody have any questions for me? That's, that's it, kind of short and sweet. Kept you on here about 21 minutes. I won't take up too much more of your time. Check out the American Warriors show, the new one that we've got up right now with uh, Chris Palmer. is absolutely phenomenal. You, it, I think it's one of the best we've ever done. He's a full-time SWAT officer, man, and it is a powerful, emotional journey that Chris takes us on. A lot of thoughts on, on the tactical consideration side of the house, a lot of stuff on the emotional side of the house. Just a phenomenal show. You won't want to miss it. Um, then I'm going to encourage you to read the DIY duty bell. The, I posted the link to the article in the notes above. All articles are free. doesn't cost you anything. AmericanWarriorsSociety.com. American Warrior shows are free, but if you want to get inside the training vault, you want to get access to the premium content, you want to become, become a coin member like most of you are this morning, you're going to have to join us. And remember, the first 14 days don't cost you a dime. If you don't like what you see inside the training vault, let me know and I'll cancel your membership. <clears throat> so it looks like Grant's got his kit pretty much back together. I'll take a few more questions and then we'll let you get on with your day. <clears throat> Rob says thanks Rich and Grant thank you no problem Eric said that was a great show I had to pause a few times uh, Jason says good morning I'm glad you changed your mind about the belt system for civvies <clears throat> you know and Jason was a marine I'll tell you Jason you, you mentioned civvies and at some point, I'm going to do a whole series on my go bag. That'll be inside the training vault. Uh, that's one of the reasons I built this, so I could do a little bit better production quality to talk about everything that preparedness related that I put in my get home, stay home, whatever. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to say was <clears throat> I always kept civilian clothes, some really thin, lightweight civilian clothes in the bottom of my Alice bag because you never know when you might have to change over and slip into town or, or whatever. And it, it's came in handy a few times. So I think you need something like what Grant has for those low vis environments. Matthew says, how do you think the numbers are panning out for the nation? We are looking at a peak in April 15th in Ohio. <clears throat> so Matthew's talking about uh, COVID-19. I will tell you that uh, the math is tracking right along. The other day on, I'm, I'm pulling up my spreadsheet on April the 1st, uh, my math said that we would have 196,608. <clears throat> we actually crossed 200,000 that day. On, a f I think, a 4.5-day doubling rate, uh, my math says we'll be at 393,000 on Sunday uh, by close of business. And we are already at almost a quarter of a million. So we're on track. Now, what does that mean? I don't really know. Because uh, one of the things that we'll talk about, we're gonna do another show on COVID for the American Warriors show, is, is um, the case fatality rate. Is that there's an interesting way that you, you can calculate it, and I'm, I'm running several different things. I really don't know, man. I'm in it just like you guys. It's my first pandemic and hopefully my last, but uh, we shall see. Let's see what else we got. Doug says, first time coffee with Rich. It's been a while. Nice to see you. Doug, good to see you, sir. Um, Fernandez, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. He says, good morning, Rich. Have you ever looked at Unity Tactical's Dutch clutch system? No, I haven't. Not familiar with that at all, but I will be. Let me write that down. Unity Tactical's clutch system. I will look that up. Thank you for that recommendation. <clears throat> John says, thanks guys. I just started running a fanny pack. Thanks for covering what's in yours. 
Great recommendations for the chest seal. Robert says the membership is well worth having. I have only scratched the surface on the training videos and have realized several things I never thought of. I appreciate that. Jason says, I agree. I was intrigued by fellow Marine Travis Haley's uh, flat pack with chest rig inside for low profile preparedness. I kind of like Geo's low profile belts too. The clutch belt is sweet. Waiting to drop a few pounds to get one. Yeah, and, and you know, right now we're sitting around kind of with COVID. Now Grant and I, we've, we're have we gonna set up this, uh, our environment a little bit better and do some more training, but is right now we have an opportunity to take advantage of this time and, and really get some good training in. That's just why, you know, we wanna make sure everybody knows about the American Warrior Society. Walt has joined us. Hey guys, listen, I've kept you on here almost 30 minutes. I wanna be respectful of your time. I know you guys got stuff to do today. I know it's a Friday. Hopefully you'll have a wonderful weekend. Anybody have anything else for me before we jump off here? I'll take a few more questions. Grant, did they, anything we didn't cover? Uh, no, I think we covered basically the entire system. One thing that we only showed briefly was mm -hmm. the actual firearm itself and mm -hmm. what it looks like inside. Maybe we could show that one more time. Yeah, we'll show it one more time. The, the Galco Hostra, <clears throat> the, the, the way that it comes out, it has this little string that you pull and it breaks, that's cool. It breaks away pretty quickly to reveal the handgun and a backup magazine. And it's, it's stuck in there with neoprene and it actually has some Velcro right here as well. And again, this thing is probably, this bag is probably older than Grant. I think I bought this bag in like 1996 and it's a Galco bag and it's held up incredibly well. Of course, I didn't use it that much, but but, it, but again, they have even better ones on the market from the, than they did in the late 90s, so. Anyway, that's all I got. Grant, you got anything else for the guys? Nope, I think that's it. Okay, again, please join me on Monday mornings for Emerging Threats Monday. And every Monday morning, I'm gonna be discussing a new threat, not to freak you out, but to help you prepare, which is what I was responsible for the, for the entire state of Tennessee, disaster preparedness. But what kind of disasters were we gonna talk about? Some of the more common ones and then some of the more esoteric ones like we did this past Monday. We talked about what happens when the grid goes down. What are the threats to our grid? How can we prepare better? Jason says, FYI, 21 years ago you put me in the core. Now you're getting me into AWS. Uh, Jason, yeah, man. Um, I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to out you. But yeah, Jason, I put Jason in the Marine Corps, man. And we reconnected a few years ago. And you're, you got a beautiful family, man, and I'm happy to have you on here joining me this morning. Uh, any final comments? John says, thanks. Jennifer is on. Good morning, Jennifer. Good to see you. Okay, guys, that's all I got for you. Stay safe, and remember, the fight is coming. Be ready.